It's that time again. Welcome to the best webinar in town. Human Web Live. Let's introduce your host from the windy city of Chicago. Currently sheltering in place, please welcome HumanWare's brand ambassador of blindness products, Peter Tucson. And from all the way across the pond, also sheltering in place, but doing so with everyone's favorite accent, please welcome HumanWare's Braille product manager, Andrew Flatry. Well, we can always hope things might be working. What's going on, Andrew? Oh, it's crazy at the moment, isn't it, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit crazy. At the Everybody, uh, welcome to Human Rare Live for Thursday, May 28th. It is uh, been a, a wild morning to say the least. So Andrew and I are currently in what we like to refer to as wing it mode. Um, <laughs> this is a very unique situation because I have no... We've, we've had some, some technical difficulties um, in terms of Windows updates and things. So I currently have no way to share my screen or my speech. Uh, but what we're going to talk about today is how we work with contacts um, in terms of key lists. So we're going to be adding contacts. Um, we're going to look at how we can edit contacts. We're also going to look at some Android settings. And we we're going to show you how to do exactly what I can't do right now, which is connect a... Um, you know, or cast your screen to a PC. Uh, there was a big Windows update and uh, definitely have uh, some craziness going on. So we'll, we'll try to work through this on the fly as we, as we roll. So it's gonna be a very impromptu sort of wing it land, which is fine. Um, we'll do the best we can. If we need to revisit topics, we can always revisit them, but we, sh we should be okay. We're going we're gonna to make the most of it. So what you've learned, Peter, is to never update your PC in these sort of critical Never. <laughs> never update your PC uh, a couple hours before you're supposed to do things, especially when you have other webinars going on in other parts of, of the world and things that, that you need to get done. And yeah, you have, you have lots of things happening. So... And this is a perfect example of, you know, this is a perfect example in a perfect situation of, you know, dealing with third party applications on a touch plus, for example, or a touch, you know, what for one minute, the touch plus, um, you know, the applications would be perfectly doing great, you know, accessibility wise. Uh, and then for all of a sudden it changes and you update the app and then things break. Um, right. So you know, this is something just to be aware of. It happens in, in all situations. And it, and it doesn't mean that we won't find a solution. And there's always, you know, you're going to see a, a lot of problem solving going on <laughs> on my end here. But it, what, it, what it comes down to is not getting shut down, finding a way to problem solve. And in a case like this, it comes down to delegation and me saying, Andrew, you're going to have to do the bulk of the work because I can't really do much currently. But we'll see if I can get my stuff um, floating in here. But I'm going to what I'm going to have you do, Andrew, is if you can share your BrailleNote Touch Plus, I think we'll, we'll do some contacts. I am going to then, I can talk about settings. I'm going to try to be, I'm going to mute myself and try to share my screen while you're going through some key list. And we'll see if I can jump in and, and do that so I can walk through some settings and such. And we do have a prize today, so don't worry. The prizes didn't get uh, technically shut down. So prizes will be, uh, will be we will give away a Victor Reader stream. Um, at the end of our of our wing it land braille note touch plus contacts and settings sort of session so andrew can you share your screen and we'll we'll do a little bit of um we'll do a little bit of key list in terms of adding um deleting and editing a contact so and then i'll talk about we'll talk about some other things but i'm going to try diligently to jump in here and share my screen as well Okay, yeah, certainly things have changed with Connect. Um, let's see if this works, it should be. So what, what happened basically is there's a Windows app that allows you to share your screen directly to a Windows PC and that app appears to have either gone away or broken or changed in some fashion. So we're, we, and we just learned this uh, about three minutes <laughs> <laughs> prior to jumping into Humanware Live. So, um, not too sure there are always other solutions and there are there are you know we might use something like screen leap or team viewer if we had more time 
But uh, Andrew's trying to get his connect working. It should be on. And it is working. You are going at a million miles an hour on the speech. It's pretty fascinating. <laughs> so if you s keep going slower. Word processor, keyword. All right. Is that good? Rock and roll. So Andrew is able to share his screen, and, and he can talk a little bit about that. I, I um, I'm not sure what's going on with the Connect app on Windows, but uh, it appears to have disappeared for me. So I will, I'm going to do some digging for the next couple of minutes, and I will jump back in and, and talk about settings. Sure. Okay. Well, well, we'll go on to uh, some of the Android settings first of all here, and how I was able to to share my screen. Uh, some of the Android settings would include setting up Bluetooth devices and set, setting up your wireless connection in that in that case. And also um, some just general settings like sleep timer and things like that. So um, from the main menu, um, to get into your Android settings, there are multiple ways. The quickest way to get into your Android settings is pressing enter with the letter Q for quick. Enter with the letter Q. Now, if you're using a touch, um, if you're using a, a touch, um, yeah, the original touch, uh, the, the method that you'd, you'd go to the, the same thing actually to enter with, uh, is that right, Peter? I can't remember from the top of my head on the, the touch first generation. Is it enter with Q as well? Or is so it, enter uh, with Q will bring you into quick settings and then you would press the letter S to move that's to right. settings. Yes, that's what's changed. So there's a slight difference where Connecting when I'm devices. pressing enter Bluetooth with Q on the touch plus, you go straight into the Android settings. But on the original touch, you press enter with Q, you then have to go and press the letter S to go into those the, the master settings. So I'm now in the Android settings and I have various different things from apps permissions to checking battery levels to um, network and internet, all kinds of different settings that you can do on standard Android devices such as your phone or your tablet. Um, now to connect to a screen, a uh, host uh, like share your screen or cast your screen to a television, um, even Chrome for that matter, you know, you could have a Chromecast. Where you need to go for that is the connected devices. So from the Android settings, we need to go to connected devices. So you could press the letter C. My focus is already on the connected devices. So I'm going to press Enter to go into that. Connected devices. Bluetooth, not connected. Um, we then have the first item there is Bluetooth. There should be an option called Cast. So as you can, you can space through the list or you could press C until you get to Cast. Bluetooth, switch on, Cast, connected. Okay, and as I press enter on cast. Cast, HCA LAP 265, connected. What will happen here will display a list of all of the possibilities of casting to certain devices. So your television could be on here. Um, I've got two different devices that, that it's seen here. It's seen um, my laptop, and it's also seen uh, an air screen, which is an application that I've I've got on my Chromebook. Um, so I can actually cast to my, to my Chromebook in that. No, sorry, my Fire Stick um, for that matter. Um, what's really important here is to make sure there's a more options here. More options button. Okay, in the more options. Pop up window, enable wireless display. Okay, making sure your enable wireless display is checked. Bottom. Okay, if it's not checked, then um, all of your wireless displays will not be in this list. Okay, so make sure that you go into that. Now, once you've got that connected and, and you press Cast. enter, More it options. should Button. then display on, on that host device. So at the moment, I am using the application on my Windows laptop called Connect. So I've typed in Connect on Windows 10, and it should be available on Windows 10. Um, but as Peter was saying, he's having some issues with that because he's just updated. It has <laughs> ran away. It has ran away from me. I have some other things. So I, I think it's a package. I need to reinstall a package. But this is also, keep in mind, this is unique to the Touch Plus. Your original Touch will not have these cast options. So if you're trying to do this, you will not see a connected devices area. Um, so when you're looking, this will cast to and you know, um, smart TVs, this will cast to any Google, sort of Google Home types of devices. I know on mine, I would see my basement Google Home speaker. Um, this will also cast to, as Andrew said, the Fire TVs or to your PC if you're running the Connect app. And that is specific to Windows 10. So keep that in mind. Windows 10, the Connect app is what you want. Um, it is in the, in the Windows Store and it, 
generally is on your computer um, and you will be able to launch it and, and, and be able to cast right to that application. So it lets you throw it and your speech will come through as well. I mean, there's a, there are other applications that you can tend to use. So if you are using um, an iPad, so in a situation in a class, um, you could be using Team Viewer. That is another option that you could be using. Um, in distance, Which we covered on the very first episode, I believe, of Humanware Live. Yep. So being able to update, um, I'm sorry, being able to bring that in, it was shown on episode one or two. We went through using Team Viewer quick support. We also talked about using Zoom to share your screen, which is what I'm going to be doing in a moment um, because I'm in here on my Touch Plus and I can actually share my screen as well. So there are other ways. You don't have to just use that way. Okay, so this is the one, one of the methods that we can use to cast your device directly through the Android environment on the touch. Connected device. devices, cast, um, connected. What's also useful here is that you have printing options. So one of the benefits of, um, of the touch plus is it allows you to print via wirelessly, um, via Wi-Fi direct. Um, and it also has the embedded drivers installed on the device. Now, you're unable to connect via USB um, this way. So if you have got a printer and you want to connect via USB, you will need to install a third party app. Okay, you'll need to uh, search for an application for that particular printer. So if you're using Epson, um, then you'd need to search for that Epson um, application on the Play Store. Then you'll be able to use the USB. But if you want to just use it in the comfort of your home or if you're in the wireless network environment, then you'll be able to go onto this printing option printing. here. One print service on. And in, in here, printing. you'll have printing services. your printing default print service set to on or off. Okay, so if you're unable to search for a printer, um, then the chances are that the, your default print service is, uh, is, is off, okay? Yep. And there are, there are print services, so printing wirelessly is very, very seamless. Uh, you are able to see them generally with that default print service. So any printer that is on your network, um, I have here, I have a couple of HPs and various things that just show up natively. Again, this is something that requires some problem solving. If you're not seeing your printer, you may want to go and add a print service from your printer's brand. And you're going to want to look and see if then it will discover those printers. If you're in a building or a network that has many, many, many printers, you might want to manually connect based on your network settings um, and actually look for the specific IP or the specific model number of that printer. And this will change depending on what brand of printer you're using. It's not a Braille note specific piece of the puzzle. This is doing with, you know, having to do with problem solving inside Android and doing some problem solving with your network if you're not seeing your printer. Okay, also in the connected devices section, we of course have Bluetooth and uh, some situations where you'd use Bluetooth is perhaps speakers, external speakers or, or even headsets for that matter. So as I go into my Bluetooth Cast. options. Bluetooth, switch on, Bluetooth, not connected. Okay, again, you will have an on and off option. Uh, so making sure that it is set to on. Go into Bluetooth. here, you will see a list of all my current paired devices. Uh, if you then want to go and pair a new device, there will be a pair new device option. So I could press the letter P. Pair new device. Okay, pair new device. I could then press enter. Pair new device. Visible as Brailleant by 32 slash Braille note touch 100. Now at this point, you need to make sure that the device that you're trying to connect to is in pairing mode. So at the moment, you can see um, those that are seeing my screen. I've got TV living room as an option to pair my Bluetooth device. I'm not going to try that because the wife is downstairs and she may be spooked out of what's going to happen. Um, so, but if the device is in set to pairing mode, the available device should then come up on here. So if you've got speakers, make sure that you put them into Bluetooth pairing mode. Normally you have to like press and hold the, the on button for uh, about five or so seconds and that will then become available in this list. And it's a um, great time to talk about the fact that you can emboss via Bluetooth with the V5 sort of embossers. So this is, and I will demonstrate this, I think on a future Humanware Live, but this is where we would go uh, to actually pair with an embosser so we could then send a file directly from keyword to our embosser via Bluetooth. And this is where these devices will show up. Okay, so then obviously you just press enter on your selected item and depending on the, the, um, 
the Bluetooth device that you're trying to connect, it may prompt you for a password. And the chances are the passwords are four lots of zeros unless you've, uh, unless you've changed it. But again, you'll need to refer to the, uh, the, the manual for the device that you're trying to connect to. But in certain situations, it would uh, just allow you to go through with that no password. Okay, uh, that is your Bluetooth uh, and connected options. Settings. Can you do a little on the um, the display in terms of the screen timeout, Andrew? Um, yeah, and, sure. And what if somebody wants to set or remove a screen lock? Those would be okay. the other two. I think that would be pretty big. Sure. Okay. So I'm just going to continue going forwards here. Passing notification battery. 18% and display. Wallpaper. Sleep go. sound. Volume. Bug display. Wallpaper. Sleep. Font size. Okay. So in your display, this is where we can change various sleep settings. So if your device falls to sleep uh, within uh, two minutes of a noose and you perhaps want to change that, this is where you need to change that. So in display, we're going to press enter. Display, brightness level, 64%. And there'll be an option called advanced. So I can just move around the screen Night light, here. off slash with adaptive brightness, optimize bright wallpaper. Advanced, sleep, auto rotate screen, font size, display size. Okay, in advance. Brightness level, 64%. Now, in advance, there'll be an option called sleep. So you could press the letter S. Sleep after 10 minutes of inactivity. And mine currently is set to after 10 minutes of inactivity. I think the default Alert. value sleep. is two minutes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's two minutes is the default value. So if you do find that your device keeps switching off and it becomes a bit annoying because you've just gone to make yourself a cup of tea or coffee or latte, um, then this is where you change it. So in your display settings, go to your advance, uh, press enter on the sleep option. And uh, here you can have various different um, timings from 10 minutes to 30 minutes to 15 seconds if you wish. Display, sleep after... Okay, so for your security part, for your password and screen locks, uh, that would be in a different section completely. So I'm going to exit out of my display options here. Settings, display, wallpaper, sleep, sound, volume, vibration, do not disturb. Storage, friendly security and location, screen lock. And this is where you'll need to go, security and location for your screen lock options. So this is where if you want to enter a password every time that you, you unlock your device, to keep it very protective, this is where you need to go. So if we press enter here. Security and location, security status. And then, then under the device security options, there'll be a screen lock options. Google find my device, security update, the device security. Screen lock, swipe. Okay, and press enter on screen lock. Do screen lock, none. Okay, so there's various different options here. So we have a none as an option. So um, at the moment, by default, what you'll need to do to unlock your device is press space with the letter U to unlock. Um, so if, you, if that becomes annoying for you, if, that, if all that you want to do is just press the, the uh, lock button and it just starts up where you want to be, uh, then you select the none option, uh, simple as that. But if you want to then just press space with U to, to keep unlocking your device, a bit like uh, any type of phones where you have to swipe up or uh, double tap to unlock your screen, then we need to make sure that swipe, swipe current screen lock is selected. Okay. Other options include pattern. Pattern, because you've turned on an accessibility service, your device. But bearing in mind that the pattern um, is not as accessible. So, um, you know, this is where you would need the screen and you'd need to shape a pattern towards a combination of dots. So certainly would not advise uh, selecting pattern and you do get prompted that the accessibility service um, will, will not apply in this situation. Uh, you then have PIN and password options. What is your preference, Peter? What is, what is it that you use? Do you use a swipe or do you use a uh, PIN or password? I am very unsecure, Andrew. I'm not a secure person, so I don't use any sort of security. I just unlock it and have it, have it come up right up to where I am. Um, but I generally use, um, when I'm setting up a device, especially in a school, you might not want that to come up and start wandering all over menus and things. So you would want to probably use swipe um, as, but I've definitely seen where there are situations depending on mobile device management where they are recommending or they are requiring you to use a password. And it's really important that if you have forgotten your password, then what you'll need to do <laughs> is actually near enough format the whole of your device. So you yep. need to be careful on, on what you select here and remember the actual password. Can you talk about the difference between PIN and the accessibility concerns there, Andrew? Sure. Well, let, you me on an accessibility service. let me select the PIN. Okay. Secure startup. Secure startup. 
Okay, so when you go to the pin, you have an option here. Okay, so it's a secure startup option. So you can even further protect your device by requiring a pin before it starts up. Now, if you select yes at this option, then unfortunately it's not gonna be accessible, okay? This is more of an Android uh, encryption point of view. So if you do select yes at this point, you are gonna find it extremely difficult to, to log in. You would need some sighted assistance at that point. So my advice at this stage, when you get prompted to this secure startup is to select no. No button. Okay, and as I select no, Edit box. you would then- Center screen lock, password entry is required you will then get an option for a pin. And here it must be at least four digits. So this, at this point you'd select your pin. Um, so, and again, it is in computer brow and I know it's in computer brow because it's prompted me with computer brow and my cursor is showing dot eight within the, the editable brackets. So here I'm just gonna do A, B, C, D. Uh, it's actually, sorry, it's a number it's looking for, I believe. Dot. Okay. Uh, so I mean, US computer, bro. Dot. So I'm going to do oh, one, oh, two, don't, three. Don't get mad at US computer rail, Andrew. I had to think then. I was wondering why it wasn't <laughs> happening. <laughs> so, for, so I'm actually using US computer, bro. So I, I tend to use UK computer, bro. But just want a simple password of one, two, three, four. And I'm going to go to Cancel. next. Button. Next button. Edit box. Re enter your pin. Password entry is required. Okay, again, it does give you that second option to make sure that the passwords match. Uh, I'm going to enter again dot, the password, one, dot, two, three, dot, four, dot. and then go to the OK button, button using my thumb keys. OK button. Notifications. Notifications. OK, so then the options you then have is what will happen when the device is locked. Um, how do you want your notifications to be displayed? Do you still want your notifications to be sent to you? Do you want to show the notifications? or hide certain sensitive notifications. Here you can select which any one of those you would like and then navigate to the, the done. Don't show notifications at all. Radio done button. Security and location. Screen lock pin. Okay, so my is now my security is now set to a pin. Now I'm not sure if this is gonna work. We'll try it. So I'm gonna lock my screen. Okay, so lock screen. screen off. So probably you'd only see, if anything, just the time showing those are able to see. I'm now going to unlock my screen. I'm going to press the, uh, the, the on button. 17, 25, charging, one hour, 25 minutes until full, casting, Bluetooth on, screen off. So charging, one hour, 25 minutes until full, casting, Bluetooth on, unlock, pin area. Yeah, it's not showing on the, it's not showing on the screen, I don't think, at this point. Um, yeah, the visual tends not to come through there, but the sound will yeah. of that pin area. Yep, so at this point, what is being displayed is um, an actual sort of telephone system structure. So you have individual numbers. So Give as I'm button. panning forward. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you're actually having to navigate to the actual pin. So if you've got a long pin number at this point, there's going to be a lot of panning forwards and backwards to find the number. At this stage, when you're doing a pin, you're unable to enter that in Brow. Okay, so you will need to move around the focus to get that pin. So I'm going to three, do one. Two, one, dot, two, dot, three, dot, four, dot. Okay, and then there is a tick button. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Enter button. Or oh, an enter button. You need to, again, navigate in using your thumb keys at this stage. Device unlocked. Security and location. Unlocked. And this is the exact same for, for anybody who uses an iPhone with a Braille display. This is exactly what you have to do as well. You have to navigate to those numbers and then press a cursor router key on the number. So th it, this, is, this is no different from unlocking um, in, in that sort of, in that, in that manner. Same thing. Well, let's try and change the different uh, Edit box. mechanism Screen again. Lock. Password um, entry is required. Again, my password entry is required. So again, security measures that if you want to change it, you do need to enter dot. your password at this stage again. Dot. Uh, so one, two, dot three, dot. four, dot. and enter. Choose screen lock, none. This time I'm going to choose password. Swipe, pattern, pin, because you password, because you've turned on an accessibility service. Secure startup, secure startup. So again, you get this option of secure startup um, password. If you do say yes, there will be some difficulties with the accessibility. So again, my advice at this stage is you to choose no. You can protect this no. device, no button. Edit box, set a screen lock, 
password entry is required. And here we're going to do a set of screen lock at this stage. And here dot. we can do whatever we like. So we could be letters. So I'm going to do A, dot. B, dot. C, dot. D. And again, it's got to be a minimum of four characters. Re-enter your password. Dot, 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 dot. Security and location. Screen lock. Password. Okay, and mine's now set to password. So I'm going to Main lock menu. the screen again. Contact. Key list. Screen off. Lock screen. I'm going to unlock it. 17, 27, charging. One hour. 25 minutes until full. Casting. Bluetooth on. Wi-Fi two bars. Battery charging. 27%. Thursday, the 28th of May. 17, 20, charging. One hour. 25 minutes. Unlocked. Edit box. Password entry is required. So what will happen here is that you still need to unlock your device. So you'll still need to press space with the letter U. But at this point, then, you'll need to enter your password. Dot, 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 dot. And you can do that in Braille. Main menu. And, yep, password you entry can do that in Braille. Contact. Key list. So the advice really, the better, I guess, more accessible way of putting some protection in would be to select that password. It's a bit more efficient. Um, you can put a, a various different passwords, including numbers and, and letters. Uh, you're not restricted to just numbers if you choose the, the PIN. Exactly. And as Andrew said, if you forget your password, you are not going to get any help from us. You've got to remember <laughs> your password. So if you lock your device, um, that is going to be on you to be able to get that reset. Um, it's the same thing if, if you lock your iPhone and you lock yourself out. Apple's not going to get you in. You're going to have to. You're going to have to get your phone fully, entirely, completely resetted, and possibly reimaged. So, you you really want to be careful if you're using this whole password method to know what your password is. Okay. Anything else you want me to show you there, Peter? No, you're good. I'm going to try to share my screen. Uh, I'm in the meeting, but I need you to give me uh, access to screen share, Andrew, as the host. Okay. I'll make you a co-host, shall I? And I make both. So I'm in as a panelist. Perfect. And then what I'll do. So now everybody, I'm going to share my screen visually. My sound is not going to come through. Um, something's wrong with my line in, but it's all good. We're going to crank our speech and we're going to go through some, some things here. So I'm going to share and I'm going to say screen and I'm doing this from the Zoom app on the Braille Note Touch Plus. And we are going to go like this. Andrew, do you see, no, it's giving me, this will stop others sharing. Can yep. you stop your screen share? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, uh, stop share. Yep, go ahead. Okay, perfect. So now I'm gonna share and we're gonna say screen and we're gonna see what happens here. And you should see this, it should be pulling. Yes. Yep. There we go. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my speech on and I'm going to, fortunately, my camera is not on, so you won't see me leaning over my Braille note like I'm going to eat it, but I want to see if everybody can hear what I'm doing. So I'm going to turn my speech on here and it might not work. I might not be able to get speech. Yep, because I'm in Zoom. There we go. Do you still, do you hear that, Andrew? We can, yes, we can hear it. Um, it's Sounds from a distance. I don't know if you yeah, can it's gonna be, up a little All right, bit. try this. Here we go. So I'm going to press the letter C and move to contacts. Tell me if you hear this. Message received from whoa, whoa. Oh, no. All right. So we're going to get, I'm going to have, can you disable the chat, Andrew? Yeah, it's going to sure. throw all that speech through. So guys, and again, this is due to our technical, wonderful issues we have. We're going to disable the chat and the hand raising. Otherwise, every single message will be screamed and I do not want that to start running over uh, what it is I'm trying to show. So I will get closer and I will, um, I'm gonna turn my speech back on here and we're gonna hope that that'll be a little better. So again, I will, I will say what it is saying. And again, this is, uh, this is temporary humanware wing it, humanware live style. So. I am on the main menu. I wanna talk about adding and working with contacts. The contacts list is a great way to organize, um, you know, the people you know into kind of a, a way that will be synced across your devices. So because we're using Google, those contacts can be synchronized and will work across your platform. So if you add a contact on your iPhone, if you have your Google contacts set to sync, they will show up on your Braille Note Touch Plus or Braille Note Touch and vice versa. You're going to be able to manage contacts and they will sync across through IMAP. Now, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into contact. So I'm going to press the letter C. Keylist. And we are going to find contacts and I'm going to press enter on contacts. We will enter my contacts list and I'll kind of talk about how we can create a new contact or edit an existing contact. So let's press enter and you will see all of my happy friends. Adrian. All right, so the, again, alphabetical order here. Um, it's gonna start with Adrian, who's the first A here in my list. You can use first letter navigation. If I wanted to find uh, somebody with the, let's just say the letter G, we can probably call my grandma or somebody, or, or let's try, let's try a K. Let's see if anybody in here with K. Kathy. Kathy, right? So I press K and I jump down to Kathy, or I press B and I jump up to the letter B and so on. You can use first letter nav. I'm gonna come up to the top. Adrian. Uh, with one, two, three in space. So again, moved up to the very top of my contacts list. If I wanna create a new contact, I can always press space with the letter N as in new. Now this is in the context menu, but if you wanna add someone, we can always do that. I'm gonna press space with N. New contact. And what will happen is I'm put in the first name edit box. So the first name, we're gonna add somebody named, oh, let's add someone named William. All right, so I type in William and I press enter. We're in the last name field here. I'm gonna type in, let's just say William's last name is, oh, William, William Smith. Just very, straightforward here. So again, type it in, press enter. We can use literary braille. I have a two dot cursor in these fields, meaning I can use literary braille and then press enter. We're in the company field here. I can type in if I want to put in a company or the title. So we'll just say William Smith works for the, a company called Coolness because that sounds great to me, right? I'm gonna press enter. The title edit box, again, what is William's title if I wanted to? And if I press my next thumb key, I will find options to add a phone number. So it says phone number colon. And if I press my next thumb key, I can add that field if I want to. So if I press enter on the add phone number button, I can come in and type a phone number for William. If I press my next thumb key, we'll do the same thing for email, right? Add email will be the next button here. So if I press enter, we're gonna go into my email address edit field. And I could type in William at coolness dot, uh, let's just say coolness is an organization. So William at coolness.org. And that is someday I will work at a place called coolness on the side when I'm, when I'm <laughs> that cool, right? So, and again, we, pre we type in the name of the email address. We will then move down our list and we see address. We wanted to add the address of whatever it may be. And I'll come down here again, all the way at the bottom. We will also see uh, before my save button, I'm going to have a, the account that I'm syncing this with. Address, so where it says source account, you will have a drop down list. And what that means is what account do you want these to sync to? Do you want this to use your your Google account, maybe you have several Google accounts on your device, maybe your exchange account, um, you know, th that is what source account means. If you only have one account on your device, then that's what it's going to sync with. And you can even turn off contact syncing within your Google account. That would be done in your, in your users and accounts options. But this is meaning what account do you want to sync this through? So any device with access to the account you have selected will see William in the contacts list. I'm gonna press my next thumb key. All right, we're gonna save and let's press enter on save. All right, and we see that I have lots of contacts here and this is my personal contacts list, but if I press W, here's William Smith in my list. And if I want to get rid of William, I can delete him here. So again, if I wanna email William, get rid of him, this is where I would come to do that. So you find your contact, you can press enter on your contact and open the contact card and I can come down and find his email address in this list. So I press my next thumb key. So coolness is the company information. Again, if I put in a title, we would see it or a phone number. So here's William at coolness.org. If I press enter on this, 
I will, or a cursor router key, it will put me into a new blank email for William. Use a different app. And it's going to ask me what I want to use to send this email. So again, you could select any email application you want to use whatever you might have on your device. I'm going to use Keymail. So I'm going to say just once here. You could say always, if you always want to use Keymail to send emails. And I'll be put into a compose field where I can now bring in you know, the, the actual name and things like that. So I'm going to come out of here, back into my contacts list. And for William, if I want to get rid of William when I'm focused on him or any contact, I can press backspace with a dropped G, just like we would delete an email or just like we would delete a singular file in the file manager. Backspace with 2356. It's going to prompt me with a key plan. Are you sure you want to delete this contact? I'm going to say OK. okay. And it deletes William from my contacts list. So you can remove um, contacts. You can also edit contacts. So I just came back to my main menu. If you want to edit a contact, you would press backspace with E when you're focused on a contact. So again, backspace with 2356 delete. We'll delete that contact you have in focus. Backspace with E would let you edit. So you can actually bring in and edit uh, a contact if you wanted to. Now, the other thing you can do, and I, this is, again, I, I ran out of time for scripting this nice demo and having it look beautiful. But if I come into my email, I'm going to press the letter E and come into Keymail. We're going to press Enter. Okay, let me get out of here because I ran into my, uh, I was in, I was coming into the webinar. I am going to select a Humanware demo account that I have within Keymail. So we're going to look at my Humanware demo account and I'll show you how you can actually add emails to or contacts from an email address. So maybe you get an email from your teacher, from a friend, from your 33rd cousin who you found out lives in Kenya or something, right? And you're thinking, wow, I really want to stay in touch. Um, and you can do that. So I am going to select my demo account here in Humanware, uh, in Keymail. I have lots of accounts. We're going to use Humanware. Let's use Humanware 10. All right. Now remember, if you email that account, it will not get a response, I promise you. So please use, use Humanware Live at humanware.com if you have suggestions, um, and also reach out through tech support channels if you have those sorts of requests. But when I come into my inbox, I'm going to see uh, messages, and I think these are actually going to be very generic because I think these are from Zillow, um, which I had signed up for some newsletters during some workshops, so I will get Zillow emails. Uh, but I'll show you how you can add an email address as sender to your contacts list. So I'm going to come into my inbox, Okay, this is about a house that's millions of dollars in Chicago that I will never buy. But let's just say we want to add Zillow to our um, to our contacts list. So I'm going to open the message, press enter on it, or cursor router key. Okay. Now, once you are in your message, what we can do if we want to add the sender to contacts, we want to add the sender of a message to key list. I can open the context menu. And this is where we find all of our nice shortcuts, reply, forward, reply all, all of those things. But if I want to, there is an option down here. There is an option here that says add sender to contacts. Now, you could press A to jump down to this, but when you press enter on add sender to contacts, it puts you into the field of your new contact. Now, in this case, it thinks the first name of this contact is Zillow, right? Because that is what it's going to pull. It's going to pull if there's a first and last name that's associated with the email address, it will autofill that. So if Andrew would have sent me an email and I pulled it up and I didn't have him in my contacts and I said, boy, I want to add Andrew. I like to talk to that guy sometimes. Um, and so I could add him and it would be Andrew would be in the first name field, Flatris would be in the, in the last name field and so on. And just like we did when we were in Keymail, uh, I'm sorry, when we were in Keylist, I can come down here and add a phone number. I can add a title, I can add a company um, and so on and go through and save 
this entry. And where that, again, allows you, so you don't have to go in and manually put all this in. So a, a great idea is if you're receiving emails from coworkers or teachers that are not in your contacts list or friends, it can be very helpful to add them so that when you're in the to field of a key mail message, you can press space with backspace and the letter E, as we talked about when we looked at key mail a couple of months ago, and pull that suggestion. So I can type in Z-I-L-L, -L, press space with backspace and E, and boom, it's going to say Zillow, and I can press enter and send Zillow an email. So you can add contacts directly from your mail. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring us back to the main menu. So I don't really want to add Zillow to my contacts list. I'll never be emailing them. But talk a little bit about, again, what do we do if we want to edit a contact? So we see different ways to add. We saw how we can delete. What if Andrew moves or what if Andrew changes his email address and I want to find him? So I'm going to come back into key list. Let's come up to the top. All right, now you can do a space with F as in find, space with F, and I can search for uh, the name of a contact I'd like to find. So I'm gonna type in Andrew F here. And I type in Andrew F and press enter. Oops, you know what? Here, let me come down. Uh, I'm going crazy here. You are in here, Andrew. Lots of people in here, but if I find the contact of Andrew, if I press backspace with E on him, we will get an edit contact message. So again, I can now search through these fields and change, maybe Andrew, you know, had a new phone number, a new email address, maybe he changed his title um, or has something different. So I can come down and edit these fields. Right, can edit these things. I can also change my source account. So again, if you're noticing that it's syncing with the wrong account, you could change it. I think here it says disabled because I don't have him syncing throughout, uh, I have him through my exchange account. And I don't like to mix and sync contacts um, from so that they're not on all my different phones and I have way too many people in way too many spaces. So you, you can do that, but I'm gonna come down here and if you had changed something, you would have a save contact button and you can actually save his changes. All right, now, I'm gonna turn speech off because it's very loud. Um, in terms of, again, being able to work with those contacts, it can be very useful. If you're finding things aren't syncing and you want to make sure your contacts are syncing, you can come into settings. So I'm gonna press enter with Q and come into settings. Once you're in settings, you can press U to move down to users and accounts. I'm gonna press enter on users and accounts and I'm gonna find the, a Google account that I want to work with. So again, this we're gonna look at our Google account and make sure our contacts are indeed syncing. If I press enter on users and accounts, I will see all of my accounts listed here and I can come in to a Google account. Let's just say I come into, I have lots of accounts here, but we're gonna look at Humanware 70. I come in and I would be able to adjust my my settings here if I press enter on account sync. It will, you will see when you select an account in your users and accounts list, whether sync is on or off. So right now it says account sync is on for all items. If I press enter on this option, again, this is in the list, but if I press enter, I will see the last time key mail was synced, the last time various pieces were synced. This is my IMAP account. If you're noticing that your contacts are not syncing, you can always turn sync off and back on. And again, this is Android, these are, these are Android settings that you have access to and you may want to adjust. All right, not the cleanest sort of screen sharing experience here with speech and sound and things like that that we're used to um, on our high level. We have high expectations for our production uh, sort of in work and flow to Humanware Live. This has definitely been a little bit more of a whole filled uh, kind of process here, but hopefully this, this made some sense in terms of how we can work through and work with contacts. What do you think, Andrew? Oh, totally agree, totally agree. So 
what I think we should do is take some questions and then we can actually launch it up into, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop my screen share and we can come in and look at um, questions and then get to our prize. Okay, let me just uh, enable the ability to raise your hands. Yes, and now you can raise your hand. You can and I will also unmute yourself. Um, we'll, we'll get to you. I don't know if there were many questions floating into the chat. I had my speech muted here. Uh, chat was um, disabled. So chat yeah. was disabled, uh, but we will review some of these. So um, let's have a look what we have. Okay. So was uh, so uh, this is a question here. Is there a reason I was unable to pair with my iPhone, so I could use my Touch Plus as a Braille display? It paired fine in Bluetooth, but that was it. So what you need to do is the process can be a little bit tricky because you have a time limit when you're pairing an iPhone with your Braille Note Touch Plus. When you you have to do that through Braille Terminal. So you will go to Braille Terminal on your main menu. You will press enter on Bluetooth. And at that point, you will go in under your, depending on the version of iOS, you need to go into voiceover settings and go into Braille. Voiceover settings is generally gonna be located right in your settings option under general and then accessibility. Sometimes it's, if you have a new version of iOS, it's just under, uh, in, in your actual settings, it will just say accessibility. You don't have to go to general first. So once you find your, Touch Plus in the list of available displays when you double tap on Braille, you will receive two notifications. You don't have to worry about a pin number, but you need to activate that pair button rather quickly or you will lose it. And it, will, it might take you several tries. Um, you may time out, but you need to activate pair on both sides and that can be a bit of an issue. So if you're unable to get it, faith and confidence. Um, you need to give yourself kind of that that time you can always just don't get shut down i've i've heard many people get frustrated with it and give up on it um but we we can't control that sort of pairing timeout that's out of our control but you do have a number of seconds to activate that pair button and activate you know your okay button on your iphone Okay, uh, another question is, why does having someone on the source code, or source account do, sorry, so what does having someone on the source account do, you know, so this is in relation to your uh, contacts. What does having someone on the source, I don't really understand the question. So I, I believe when you go into your contacts, you have a source account. Um, so you, you can choose between various different email accounts that the contact is linked to right I think that i think that's probably what the question is referring to the, so if you go into your yeah. contacts you'll have a source account and it'll be listed as peter gmail.com i believe and maybe that's the question right I mean. that's just yeah and then, and then again as as i as we went through that just shows what what account is syncing so any account that has access to my gmail account or any device i should say maybe my iphone my computer my tablet um maybe my Amazon device, whatever it is, will have access to those accounts. It has to do with syncing. It's how modern devices will work. So any, my source account just tells any device that has access to that account that the change will take effect, whether it's adding a contact, removing a contact, um, much how email works, current email. When you delete a message on your iPhone, that message is deleted on any device that has access to your account because it's synchronizing. It's using a source account to synchronize. And that's, that's what that does. Okay, uh, here's a question from Theo. It's, why is there a separate Braille code for password entry? Surely it could just use computer Braille like it did on the old touch. Um, so the answer to that, Theo, is yes, it, it is computer Braille. Uh, they're just various different password options. So we, we went through various different password options. We had a PIN. Uh, when a PIN is required, you would need to navigate uh, to that pin. So when you're in the lock screen, you sort of press in space and you, you're actually navigating with your thumb keys to the actual number. Uh, the password, however, entry, that is computer brow. Okay, yes. so it still remains computer brow. Yep. Okay, um, shall we answer some live questions before we do the draw? We certainly can, and please, everybody, 
please keep the questions relevant to today. I have been hijacked in the past few weeks on some wild goose chases down all <laughs> sorts of paths. So please keep your questions relevant. We will unmute you and yeah, let's, let's do it. And then we'll get to the drawing. And I can say that on the draw, there is a person who, uh, who we have drawn is actually is not, doesn't appear to be online. Uh, so, but I will give so them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, it, we'll go to the it, second choice. We'll see. It may be on a phone. So uh, we'll, we'll yep. find out soon. Uh, okay. So let's have a look at some raised hands. Uh, okay. So we have Abby Taylor. Abby Taylor, rock and roll. Here we are. Okay, Perfect. I was about to. I can you hear me now? Absolutely. I was panicking because after I raised my hand, I could not find that unmute button. So I went in to ask a question. While I was typing my question, you said, "Okay, we're going to go to live questions." And so, okay, well. <laughs> You're golden. So, okay. Oh, uh, great. My question is: I have a Gmail account. And um, I was wondering if there's any way I can sync that the contacts on the Braille Note Touch Plus with uh, Outlook on my PC, which I also use Gmail. Because uh, so those aren't syncing. Is there any way to do that? No, that, that okay. is Exchange. So those are separate oh, okay. protocols. Outlook uses oh. what is called Exchange as the protocol. Oh, okay. You can certainly do it, but you would have to add your Exchange account to your Braille Note Touch Plus and oh. then sync those accounts. You cannot sync Google accounts into Outlook in an easy okay. sort of sync this way. It, it relies on Exchange to do that. Um, there, are, there are different protocols for it. So that's why you're not seeing those exactly the same. Okay, thank you. Yeah. What, what, no what, what you could do though as a, as a, for, a food of thought is that you could actually set some rules to forward emails. Um, that could be one option. <laughs> if, yeah. if you want to go down that, you could set a forward in, uh, filtering so that any emails that go to your exchange, you can also send a copy to your Gmail. Oh, okay. There are All ways, right. yeah, there are ways to do that inside account settings, various places. Okay. Web apps. All right. Sure. Well, thank you. Thanks, okay. Abby. Cheers. All right. Okay. Next then we have, uh, and there's a few telephone numbers we have here as well. Uh, we've got Beverly Clifford. Hello, Beverly. Beverly Clifford. You are on the air. The digital airwaves. Beverly. No. Beverly, are you there? Unmute yourself. Press Alt and the letter A. Alt A, if you are on a PC, you have an unmute button on the iPhone or on Android. It is Option A on the Mac. I think I've countdown. said Command A in the past. Three, two, one, so, I'm sorry, Beverly. We will get to you next time. Who else we have, Andrew? Okay, we have uh, Terry Holbert. Terry, you are on. Terry, Terry. All right, we're gonna do it again. Three. Oh, there we go. He's, Terry, he's... you have unmuted. Yeah, I did. How's it there going? Uh, this is all about the Braille, all this about context about the Braille touch, isn't it? Yes. Okay. That's my only question. I really didn't, I don't have a Braille touch. And, so this okay. really isn't kind of somewhat relevant, but. Yeah. If, and remember, when, when we send out the emails, when you register for the webinar, um, the descriptions are there. So it certainly will cue you into what we're going to be talking about for the given week. I think many people are coming because they want to win a prize. Uh, so make sure you're reading what those topics are. Otherwise, uh, it might be a little, you know, we, we are, again, these are focused on humanware products. This is generally humanware blindness products. So no. it would be the Victor Reader strand or the Braille whether it's Braille displays or Braille Note Touch or Touch Plus strand of things. So I thought you were going over the Victor Stream today too. Is what I read. Uh, not today. Uh, definitely okay. not in not in the description. That um, that okay. that was a couple of weeks ago. Mm, I was going to register yesterday about the CCTV. You can only register for one at a time, though, right? Uh, you can certainly do both. You would just have to. So there are Human Wear Live webinars for low vision that take place on Wednesdays. Oh, okay. um, you, when you register, you would register twice. So you register first for 
the low vision webinar and you would come back to the same page and, and you are able to register for the blindness webinars as well. They're, they're both on the HumanWare Live website. So again, if, if you go to humanware.com, if you click on support and then click on HumanWare Live, you will see upcoming webinars and you can register for all upcoming webinars there. If you hit me on your email list, I'd appreciate it for the upcoming webinars. You can subscribe on our website, Terry, uh, at the bottom okay. of our page. There is a, there is a subscribe link. And I, I know I went through the process at some point, but I will, I'm, I'm certainly, if you're not receiving our emails, if you send me an email at humanwarelive at humanware.com, I will, I will forward it along and get you, uh, try to get you signed up. Well, that sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, live Terry. At humanware .com, right? Humanware live at humanware.com. Oh, live, humanware live at humanware.com? You got, you got it. it. There we go. Thanks, Terry. There, thanks. Thanks, Terry. All right, we'll do a couple more. Okay, so we've got some telephone callers. Uh, Telephones. So <laughs> I guess we'll just do the area codes, the first three numbers. First three numbers, okay, that I have is 1509. So 509. If you were in the 509. That's me. That is you. My name is Debbie. My hi, name Debbie. is Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Um, hi. So my question is, um, and you kind of went through it, but I'm really not a techie. Uh, can you just quickly explain again how I could sync my contacts in my Braille note with my iPhone contacts? So what you need to do is you will want to make sure that your Braille Note Touch or Touch Plus, you need to make sure that your Google account is on the device. That is the number one step. So you need to go into settings. You will need to make sure that under users and accounts that your Google account is on the device. Once your Google account is on the device, you want to make sure that your contacts are set to sync. So when you look at that Google account, there is an option that will show if sync is on for all items and you want to make sure that contacts is checked. If when contacts are synced, they will show up in key list. If contacts are not set to sync, they will not show up. And so you're going to, you, that is the key is making sure your Google account is on the device and that contacts are set to sync. The other thing to make sure is when you're adding a contact or making sure you look at your contacts in key list and make sure that they too are set to have their source account as your Google account. Otherwise, if, if you don't do that, they're not going to sync to your phone and, and vice versa. So that's, that's how you're going to make that happen. And again, this can get muddled because Google has two types of contacts technically. They have the contacts that you have associated with your Gmail account, and then there's an older sort of Google contact card area that, that may come into play. So you need to do some investigating sometimes on your Google account to make sure that those contacts are syncing across. Oh, okay. I think I got it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Debbie. Okay. Faith Thank and confidence, so no problem. Right. right. Let's do one more before we draw. Okay, so we have uh, Paul, Paul Paravano. Paul Paravano, Mr. Northeast coming in. Paul. Just unmute yourself, Paul. There we go. There we go. Rock and Good roll. Good afternoon. How's it How's going? Up? Great. It's an honor to speak to the uh, Grand Ambassador. For the <laughs> that is uh, that is that is a funny one, man. I I definitely uh, <laughs> I, I love uh, when I'm called the Grand Ambassador. Well, that's that, that's what you are. And then uh, Lord Lord Fratris, maybe we can. <laughs> exactly. I'll take that. <laughs> um, can you guys tell me what uh, is happening when I hit um, refresh on contacts or? Uh, planner. I, I don't seem to ha notice a whole lot happening. So what's supposed to happen, Paul, you, so it's, it's a great question. Same thing in email. When you press enter with R, when you are in your contacts list, or when you are in your 
email inbox or you know in your planner it, it it will force a sync to the active account that you are looking at now that doesn't always guarantee that it's syncing properly especially if you have multiple accounts on your device so i found that because i use exchange and google and as as i know you do as well sometimes the best way to force that sync is enter with r works great for email it will it will vary because email is running strictly through the that imap protocol but enter with r will force that sync and will refresh and sometimes depending on the service though it, it can certainly take some time to actually re, you know refresh that that service so it's um it's it, it, it will try to force a sync. That's really what it's doing. When it says refreshing, it's forcing a sync. Excellent. Thank you very much. You guys, you guys are the high point of my sheltering week. E even, even with our <laughs> wing it sort of uh, off kilter show uh, today, it, you know, it, it we doesn't were... really matter. Anybody close to Lake Michigan is. is uh, that's what book. I'm talking about. Now and, we're and really the, talking. And, and, and to be on the on the digital line with the Lord and an ambassador. Is <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks you so much, very Paul. much. Much Thank appreciate you. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Brother. All right, we'll do one more. One more. Okay, uh, let's go for another caller. Um, a lot of callers today. So we have um, 8014, 8014, area 801. code. Where's okay. that? Yeah. 801, Hello. There you, are. There you yes. go. Hello. Hello. Um, yes, Mike, uh, I really have a comment, not a question, um, but it has to do with what you were saying about uh, cell phones earlier. Um, I just had this problem and I had it, it turns out, because I called HumanWare yesterday about it. I had it because it was, um, I have a Touch Plus and I had updated recently to 13.5 iOS. Mm -hmm. And apparently, according to Andre, um, what happens is it, it works beautifully with the touch, but not with the touch plus. And so you have to do the, the repairing cycle all over again if you have the 13.5 update. So it could very well be. I know that, uh, you know, part of working with a beta can, there many things can happen. Um, that is something, if, if there are problems directly related to iOS, we need to take that to Apple. Um, so we, we can do that. And if we need to work out some kinks, we will. But if, if you're running any sort of beta, um, you know, sometimes things will, will go a little nuts. And I know, like anything, even Braille support in general, um, from versions of not just Apple, I don't want to throw Apple under the bus, but any OS, when things update, things break, things change, things, I mean, I have that exact perfect example of this morning where you know half of what I do for human we're live is is not working and I need to spend the rest of the day and over the next few days to really try and figure out what uh, might be might be going on so those sorts of quirks can pop up when they do we try to squash them or find a solution um, but that's a bummer you have to redo the pairing process I don't know why that would be but certainly we can we can investigate that would be great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Shall we do the draw? We shall. We certainly shall. Okay. So, and in fact, this week, this week, uh, Peter, I actually have a drum roll. <laughs> Whoa, Andrew. You see, you're prepared. I was, uh, Wow. Not well. I'm not prepared. It's just something I quickly you searched. Are. Let's see. Shall we see what happens? <laughs> I hope it doesn't work. I hope it. I hope it plays uh, something crazy. So it's today we're winging. So we'll give it a go. I love it. Drum roll, please, Andrew. Okay. Well, here goes. Yes. Now we're talking. There we go. <laughs> and and uh, the the winner is Tashia Rika. Rika. So name is Tashia, sorry, Tashia Rita. Tashia Ryder or Reader. Reader, yeah. Now the email address that you've used or currently I'm unable to search for you on here. So unless you're on a phone. So uh, I'm going to lower all hands for this. Um, so let me just lower everyone's hands. Everyone's hand is down. So uh, if you are here, 
If you're on a phone, <laughs> Oscar, so if you're on Oscar, please lower your hand. <laughs> <laughs> if everybody could put their hand down, it would be greatly appreciated because we want to see if, um, if Tashia, if, if Tashia is here. Um, nope, not sorry. Uh, so, okay, we're going to give five seconds. Five, four. Three, Can you spell the first name, two, just Andrew? Yeah, it's a T A S H I A. All right. So Tashia, we would love to yeah. have you win a stream, but unfortunately, we're going to move on. It appears as though you are not present. All right. Ah, okay. Let's try the second in uh, second in line. Who's the next? Yeah, and option? the second in line is also not. By the by, the, uh, by, by the, the name is it. not here. Is Megan Eason? Megan Eason. Okay. Megan. So again, if you're on your phone, uh, I know that the the name's not there. So if you are on a if you are a caller from your mobile and your name is Megan Eason, uh, raise your hand. What do they do to raise their hand on a mobile device, uh, I'm Peter? I'm pretty sure it's star nine um, to raise your hand on a mobile phone. I believe. I could be wrong. It could be. Star seven. I need to. Somebody on the phone uh, will can correct us. I think star nine. I haven't done it in a little bit. Megan. Okay. Oh, Megan. We're we're all for two. But that's okay. That just means uh, somebody who's here will win a Victor Reader stream. So yeah. Sorry, Megan. Um. Let's yeah. Let's okay. Let's... So uh, now just to double check to see if this one. Oh, okay, we do have a winner here. Okay, we do have a well, winner. You need to play your drum roll again then one more time because that's awesome. Oh, you know, Andrew, the best thing about that drum roll is it sounds like it's going through a dryer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. who do we have? Okay, well, the winner of the Victor Reader stream is Sherry Wells Jensen. And Sherry, Sherry Wells Jensen is here. So Sherry, um, if you would like to talk to us, you don't have to, but if you would like to, you can raise your hand. Um, if not, that's okay. We don't want to put you on the spot. Um, but if you would like to say hi, uh, we, can, we can unmute you. If not, we totally understand. So Sherry, if you, if you want, we'll give you a couple seconds. And um, if not, we will be in touch with you and we will get you your victor. Oh, yep. She's, uh, she's uh, ready to chat. So hello, All Sherry. Right. Sherry. You're on. Just unmute yourself, Sherry. You need to unmute. Yep. We've unmuted you, but you'll have to do it also. Find your unmute button. Can always, there we go. Uh, there we go. Awesome. Hi. How are you doing? I am awesome. Thank you. Great. What a happy where, day. Where are you at, Sherry? I am in Bowling Green, Ohio. Love this. So we've had Ohio, we've had Alabama, and we've had I don't we don't we didn't hear from our first winner. I don't I don't remember. But congratulations. That's awesome. I know I've, well, I've thank you. I know you've you've been at a couple of these, so it's fantastic to yeah, this is have good. you win. So you will get a second gen stream and we'll we will be in touch with you. Um we'll we'll have um our, our marketing team reach out and, and we'll get that okay, over cool. to you. Cool, thank you. Rock and roll. Have an awesome Thursday, or as I call it, Friday Eve. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. Congratulations, Sherry. All right, we're going to take a couple more questions, maybe two or three. Okay, so let me just get back to the screen. Okay, so uh, we have Terry back on again. Let's see if we can get Terry back. Uh, we tried to unmute him. So, Terry, hello. We're going to give you another go. Can you unmute yourself, Terry? There we go. Yeah, right. can I synchronize right, my Outlook contacts with my with a Google contacts? So that that question was asked. You'll have to use Exchange, which is separate from Google. So you'll need to. Uh, you, those are two separate systems. Outlook uses the Exchange protocol. Google is is different. Now you. There are probably some apps or some third-party ways of doing it, but I'm saying natively, just on you know, 
on if, if you had a Braille note, it, it wouldn't be as easy. You would, you would have to add the exchange account and add the Google account, and then you can sync them. But thanks a bunch, Terry. Let's uh, let's float through. We'll do a okay, couple more. Okay, so we have um, Daniel Burton. Danielle Burton. Hi, can you hear me now? You sure can. How Hello. are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Um, so I was playing in the contest on my burnout touch plus while you guys were demonstrating. And um, I see how you can delete. Is there a way that if you have a bunch of old contests, how to like delete multiple at the same time? Or do you have to? No, there's no way right now to mark like you can on an email where you can hit backspace with L, for instance. Yeah. Um, there's no way to do that. As of right now, it doesn't mean that's something we couldn't do. Um, but as of right now, you would do those one by one. I think if you go into the native Gmail app, there is a way to do that through the contact cards. But on your Braille note, you will do them one at a time. There's no batch deletion for contacts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. A couple more, Andrew. Two okay, more. couple more. Two more. Okay. Today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we have Oscar. Time. Hello, Oscar. Oscar. You are on. You sure can. How's it going? Uh, I'm fine. Um, I want to ask a question about uh, casting. Um, okay. You know when you like cast your uh, um, th there's an issue with the enable wireless display because you know when you go to more options, sometimes if if you turn it on. Doesn't say that this option is actually checked, so that one has to be a bit fixed because I know sometimes uh, for users it may be a bit confusing, uh, especially because like you may be like turn off and then you turn it on, but then you may not know if it's on because you just turn it off. Sure. Yeah, and I think the other thing to do as well is sometimes if if you enable it, back out of connected come back into connected devices and reactivate cast as well um, and that will that will be another way as well to make sure it refreshes because sometimes just like anything sometimes even a bluetooth device might not pop up right away or in this case a cast device sometimes it won't see it immediately so it's a yeah. definitely something that you can do also to make sure that it's refreshing yeah i tested it with my samsung tv actually because i have a 49 inches tv uh and basically that's what i need when you press on the tv or device that you will, for example, um, that that the that the device will say TV TV a few times because it's like buffering because it's attempting to connect. Yep. To right. Yeah. It certainly will, and you want to make sure that sometimes a TV depending on what you're using, it might have an access code that you need to enter on the TV that could or could not be accessible so that somebody can't just barge into your TV. Um, in this, just another note, I mean, this will work with Android, will work with your smart TVs. It will not work with Apple TV. That's an entirely different process for AirPlay. So you cannot cast to an AirPlay receiver through this cast method. But it does work with uh, Chromebook and the Fire TV series well. That's a possibility. Rock and roll. Thanks so much, Oscar. Thanks, Oscar. Take care. All right. One more. One more person. Okay. We have Doc Wright. Doc Wright. Doc. Welcome. Right. Hello. Hello. How's it going? When you were talking about the contacts and you, I was wondering, is there a way if you, when you talked about the source accounts, is there a way if you need to, needed to, to have the, the contact you just added to multiple sources. You can't check multiple accounts. Um, what you could do, I, I actually, there may be a way to, ooh, I wonder what happens if, if you change the source account, in theory, it should synchronize to that second account. But I need to do some digging as to how uh, that that might work. Some people might hear my phone ringing in the background. Um, but it, it, will, it should let you dock. If you change that source account to a second account on your device and you hit refresh, in theory, you should be able to sync that across. But I need to do some digging as to whether or not that actually works. I'm not positive. There is no way to check like three accounts on one contact. But in theory, if you did one and it sank, you could, you could change that source account and sync it again, and it should carry over. I don't 
I think it may remove it from your first account, but I don't think it will. I'm not too Hopefully sure. Hopefully not, because I, I have like six email accounts. Mm -hmm. Well, th those will all be in key list. Uh, oh, okay. They will all sync if you, if you have, because again, the issue you run into there though is you don't, you know, you might have a lot of duplicate contacts if you, if you start mm -hmm. doing it that way, because mm -hmm. then it will have a, a, an account, a contact for each source account. And so you can run into, I know I have had situations in the past where I'll, I'll have three instances of the same person mm -hmm. because I'm using three separate accounts. So it might be good to, you know, to synchronize or to use, you, you can always, it doesn't mean that you can't still email those people from other accounts, but to synchronize them into one, one actual source account. Uh, okay. All righty. But we'll, we can, I can certainly look into it, but thanks. Thanks a bunch, doc. Thanks for being here. All right. All right, friends, we are going to call it a day. I'm going to definitely not be as ill prepared uh, as we move forward, but uh, we hope it was helpful. Definitely um, <laughs> need to uh, try and find a, a way to, a way to make sure connect is, is up and running. So I'm going to do some digging, but we'll be back next Thursday. Uh, I'm thinking we may look at some embossing uh, as well as possibly a, a, some, a Victor Reader side of things. So we will have a prize. I don't know if it will be a stream, um, but, I, but we will have something to offer next Thursday. What do you think, Andrew? Um, well, yes, there's certainly going to be a prize. Um... Or is there a prize? I'm not sure. You'll have to. You'll have, to, have to register. You no, know, you'll have to register. You'll have to register and attend to find out. Okay? Exactly. We're going to keep it open here, so there may be a prize. There may not. There may be. There may not. So uh, you'll have to register and find out. Andrew's toying with everyone's psyche <laughs> before the weekend. Thanks so much for your time, everyone, and uh, we will see everybody next Thursday. Take care, everyone.